please stand. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We sing our first hymn. Up from the grave he arose. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to this Easter Sunday Holy Communion service. And also <clears throat> welcome to those who are joining us this morning on online. So welcome to them as well. <clears throat> and so, Alleluia, Christ is risen today. Alleluia. Alleluia. <clears throat> Shall we say that again? We'll say it together. Alleluia. Christ is risen today. Alleluia. And so we come now to our preparation prayer. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worldly magnify your holy name 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us confess our sins before God. In baptism we died with Christ, so that as Christ was raised from the dead, we might walk in newness of life. Let us receive new life in him as we confess our sins, our sins in penitence and in faith. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. And so God forgives all who truly repent. And so may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we're now going to stand and sing the Gloria. So please stand. Please be seated. We come now to today's collect. So let us pray. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory to whom you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honor, glory and might, now and all eternity. Amen. And now we're going to have today's first reading. Today's first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10, verses 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show his favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. 
He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen. By us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, and everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. So good morning again, everybody. Easter, it wouldn't be Easter without eggs. What is she up to now? That's what you're probably wondering. So boys and girls, could you help me to preach the first part of my sermon? Do you think you could do that? Yeah, well thank you, Matilda. At least there's one person that's gonna preach from this corner. Now, Roger and myself have been going in and out of schools in the lead up to Easter. And I, for one, have definitely poured my heart out talking about the meaning of Easter. And at the end of the assemblies, when I asked all the children what you're looking forward to, do you know what they said? Can you have a guess? What do you think everybody was looking forward to? Eggs. Eggs. Just any eggs? Boiled eggs for breakfast? What is Chocolate eggs. That's what they were looking forward to. So do you know, I thought, if you can't beat them, join them. So I'm going to be using Easter eggs to explain the story of Easter. Now, I need your help, Carol. If you hold my lovely basket, and if you get one child to open the green egg for us, would you not love to have that egg for your breakfast? Go on. Now, there's something inside it. Shake it. Can you hear anything? No? Oh, a little bit. Open it. What is that? Colin. It's a picture, isn't it? Do you want to show it to your friends? Let's see if they know what that picture is of. The Last Supper. It's the Last Supper. Now, what happened at the Last Supper? Does anybody know? Who wants to have a guess? They had the feast because God knew that he was going to die soon. Well done. They had a feast. And at that feast, Jesus told his friends, his disciples, all that was going to happen to him. Now, the next egg, which I think is the yellow one. Let's get one of the girls to open that one. What's in that egg? So we've just had the Last Supper. Jesus told his friends what was going to happen. <gasps> What's in it? Do you want to help her, girls? What can you see? Screws and a cross. So we've got screws. I couldn't find a nail. We've got nails and a cross. What do you think that says about Easter? That Jesus was put on the cross to die. Yes. And the nails did what for him? They used them to nail him to the cross. To nail him. Can you imagine the size of nails that you needed to keep a human adult to a tree? It couldn't have been pretty. Final egg. So Jesus was nailed to the cross. <gasps> this is the big one. You definitely got a surprise in there. What's in it? Nothing. Is it empty? Yeah. Why do you think it's empty? Because he died. And then? He came back to life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It didn't finish there that he died. So that's the Easter story using eggs. Now, can you see the giant eggs over there? Similar to these ones. Next picture, please, Joshua. I have got those eggs.
So now we're going to have our gospel reading for today, so please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved. She came to the house where Peter and John were staying. She stood a moment to catch her breath and then she said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Where could it be? So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. They ran as fast as they could. John bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. The body was gone. But the wrappings were left where they had been. Then Simon Peter, who was behind him, arrived and went into the tomb. Peter saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the burial cloth that had been around Jesus' head. This cloth was folded up by itself, separate from the linen. Finally, John, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Did they believe because the tomb was empty? No. Did they believe because of angels? No. Did they believe because of the grave wrappings? Yes. The position of the grave wrappings convinced them that this was no grave robbery. The grave wrappings were intact. They were still coiled where the body had been. Peter believed. John believed. And they were amazed. Then the disciples went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white, seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, have you carried him away? Tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Please tell me. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Then Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. Mary Magdalene received the blessing. To be the very first. To say the words. I have seen him. I, I have, have seen, seen the Lord. Lord. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as we celebrate your rising this resurrection morning, may we, by your infinite grace and mercy, be transformed by your word this morning and drawn into closer relationship with you. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> Very often, it is the brief statements that we make in life that has the biggest impact. Not long, drawn-out speeches, not, but short phrases that are often remembered and can be life-changing. Phrases such as, will you marry me? It's a girl, or it's a boy. Or how about, he's got the job. The scriptures are full of amazing stories and parables, long epistles. But three words flung Christianity into being. He is alive. Our thoughts may rewind all the way back to the Garden of Eden, or Moses, Abraham, the prophet Isaiah, David, that holy night in Bethlehem when Jesus was born, or Mary and Joseph scolding a 12-year-old who had disappeared without telling them where he was going, and then when he did appear, declared that he was about his father's business. We think of the Last Supper, that faithful night in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus hammered to a tree, the empty tomb, and we leap into this morning, 2022, a church gathered on Halliwell Road to remember that God sent his son. They called him Jesus, that he came to love, heal, and forgive that he lived and died to buy our pardon, and that an empty grave is there to prove our Savior lives. We are a part of this ongoing story. We're not just spectators. So today is significant in that, had Jesus not rise from the dead, Christianity as we know it would have died with him. Jesus told his disciples that he would rise again on the third day, but they did not understand. We know from scriptures that on the first Easter Sunday, the day Jesus told them that he would rise again, the disciples were still feeling sorry for themselves. And from our reading that we just heard from Angela and Linda, Peter and John were holding a pity party when Mary banged on the door and the last thing they expected to hear was that Jesus was not there. That's why they ran as fast as they did. They could not believe it. They nearly tripped up over themselves. But he had told them all this. They were looking for Jesus in an empty tomb. The empty egg symbolizes this. Looking for the living among the dead. In John's gospel, he notes that based on how the linen was left, there is a PowerPoint picture there, Joshua, I think. Based on how the linen was left, not a grave robbery. In particular, the bit that had been wrapped around Jesus' head was now neatly folded, as though Jesus had given them a very gentle clue, like he was kind of saying, yes, go on, think about it. What did I tell you? And as we now know, Jesus appears to them and they reunite in the upper room. Their emotions were a mixed bag, to say the least. They were overjoyed at the realization that they were, in fact, 
on the winning team. It didn't seem so three days ago. Equally, the likes of Thomas was confused and still doubting until Jesus allowed him to give him a once over for himself. Dare I say, it was a lot more intrusive than security at the airport. Put your finger here, put your hand through that side. The savior of the world, our savior, was dead, and behold, he now lives. Next slide, please. So that's a bit of the Easter story we all know and we remember very well. But I'd like to leave you with a little bit of my favorite bits of the Easter story. After Jesus rose from the dead, for 40 more days, he went about interacting with the disciples and others. Imagine someone telling you that the queen came to Bolton, but you didn't see her. No one but a few strange people saw her. So here it was, Jesus was going about so that that could not be said. People who had witnessed him die upon a tree now sat with him, talking and eating together for over 40 days. And to add, as we were talking about this week at home, in Matthew 27, verse 52 to 54, it says, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus's resurrection and went into the city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were God in Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. After Jesus's resurrection and ascension, where he now sits by the right hand of God the Father, interceding and praying for you and for me, the church grew and the disciples and those Jesus was teaching for just over a month were greatly encouraged, as you can imagine. But it wasn't a massive growth. And then, a few days after his ascension, Pentecost happens. Jesus had told them that it's better for him if he goes, that they would do great things, that he would send the Holy Spirit to be their helper. And my word, when the Holy Spirit came upon them in that upper room, they were on fire, completely energized, and the church exploded and began to multiply. Every one of them willing to die, be martyred for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And some were. We know the Easter story well, don't we? But let us pray that the anointing power of the Holy Spirit that now lives in me and in you will continue to change our hearts and our lives and that the church will grow as a direct result of us, his disciples on Halliwell Road, being on fire to share the good news. Today, we also remember the mere fishermen, mere tax collectors, who by his Holy Spirit were transformed into soldiers of the faith. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
Thank you, Lufita. <clears throat> and so now we're going to stand and say together what we believe in the Creed. Please stand. <clears throat> Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for our intercessions. <clears throat> and so today's response to our prayers is when I say, Jesus, stand among us, please respond with, in your risen power. <clears throat> so let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we meet with joy this Easter morning to worship you, and our joy is in, the, is in that Jesus Christ, our Saviour, was crucified, dead, and was buried, is now alive forevermore, our risen and reigning Lord. As we celebrate his triumph over death, we pray that his joy may abide in our hearts, so that our lives may proclaim his praise forevermore. Jesus, stand among us. Eternal God, in whom all our hope in life, in death and all eternity, grant that, rejoicing in the eternal life which is ours in Christ, we face whatever the future holds in store for us, calm and unafraid, always confident that neither death nor life can part us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. We remember also all those who doubt the good news and all who are seekers for the truth. Jesus, stand among us. We remember with gratitude the presence of the church in remote and highly populated areas all over the world and in places where they are <clears throat> missionaries are not made welcome. We ask that you keep safe those missionaries from our West Bolton team and other mission partners' churches who spread the gospel in these places. We pray for other Christians rejoicing today in the wonder of the resurrection. We pray that we may recognize you as we walk through our days, and we ask you to disturb any complacency which is blurring our spiritual vision. We give thanks for those who have taught us the faith and introduced us to the living Lord. We pray for our schools, colleges, and universities, for our Sunday schools, and for all our churches in the West Bolton team, and our mission partners, and all who teach religious education. And we ask that you bless with your presence our homes and workplaces in all that is done in your name. Jesus, stand among us. We pray for the courage to speak out against injustice, persecution, and oppression. We pray that our leaders in government and other walks of life may establish and uphold right values and sensitive legislation. We pray for places such as Syria, Nigeria, Iran and Iraq, Afghanistan, Israel and Palestine, India and Pakistan, Russia, and the Ukraine war in South Sudan, and so many other places where there is conflict unrest and oppression. And we remember the huge price paid by the innocent human casualties of these conflicts. Jesus, stand among us. We remember today all those who are struggling with life. We pray for the world's poor, for refugees, asylum seekers, and evacuations, evacuees, especially from the Ukraine, and for all who are used as work slaves. Bless all who are losing heart or who feel discouraged or despondent. We ask that you be with those who are terminally ill in hospice or in care and on their last journey to your heavenly kingdom. We ask that you place your healing hands on all who are ill and on those whose lives are filled with pain, anxiety or sorrow and to come alongside them 
and speak their name. So let us now have a time of silent prayer for those we know personally who are in need of our prayers. <clears throat> Jesus, stand among us. We remember today those who have, been bereaved, who have been bereaved this year, especially those left on their own and who are lonely and unable to cope, and those who have lost a loved one due to the COVID-19 virus. With the words of, resur of the resurrection fresh in our minds, we commend to your eternal love those who have died that they may live with you forever. For those, who mourn a loved, uh, who, for those who mourn a loved one passing, we ask that you be with their families and friends as they grieve for them this Easter and the dark days ahead. Jesus, stand among us. Father, may our lips and our lives express our heartfelt thanks and praise to you for rescuing us and, thank, and setting us free to live with the hope of eternal life in your heavenly kingdom. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all your saints, we commend ourselves and all peoples to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <clears throat> and so now we come to the time of peace. <clears throat> God has made us one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Thumbs up or wave. <laughs> And so we're now going to stand and sing our second hymn for today, Thine Be the Glory. Please stand.
himself known as the breaking of bread. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread 
to share in the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Christ or Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast.
God of life, who for all redemption gave your only begotten Son to the death of the cross, and by his glorious resurrection have delivered us from the power of our enemy, grant us so to die daily to sin that we may evermore live in him in the joy of his risen life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us for his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Please stand for our final hymn. Christ the Lord is risen today.
I think Marjorie has voted. your husband will not be shortchanged at Easter. Needs a full song. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon us and remain with us always. Amen. He is not here. He is risen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
This is our heart, the servant. 